Welcome back to AV Veterans Talk. We're continuing our conversation with this week's guest, Jody Champagne. So Jody, we, uh, once again, you know, you, your projects are, are, are thriving, shall we say. It, it's all good. And uh, of course, the, the next project comes down to the research and, you know, getting everything, bringing everything together for the project you know, your new book and things like that. So you spoke of, uh, you know, uh, the lady with the grave adoption and Robin, uh, who's a local Animal Valley person here, and her connection to, you said, Flounder's Field, her her uncle? Her great uncle. Her great uncle is buried at Flounder's Field. Correct. And so, you know, of course, they, you know, adopt, you know, and I, I've heard of the, you know, through other programs, you know, where the, the locals over there, they adopt yes. the graves of, of the individuals. And that's what really kind of sparked you to your next project here, correct? And, you know, uh, and you wanted to journey over to, to Europe and stuff and experience it firsthand, right? Yes, yes. You, you wanted to see these people face to face and say, why are you doing this? Why are you adopting, right. you, know, you know, America, people you don't even know. Right. You know, stuff and, and the importance there. So uh, that, that program uh, over there uh, is, has been in place for how long? Ooh. Um, well, technically, uh, it depends upon uh, where you look. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually started for World War II okay. back in the 40s, I believe. Right, right. And uh, our late 40s. Um, and then it... it gradually started um, spreading out to the other cemeteries mm -hmm. over time. Right. So um, I do uh, have a book that was given to me actually last year when I was in Europe about the process of finding um, the soldiers that were buried when they died um, in a makeshift grave, because that's how they did it. If somebody died in the field hospital, they would just bury them outside mm -hmm. with a wood, wood stick uh, um, cross. And, um, and then they would be, you know, um, brought back out to another grave. And at some point, some of them were re, reburied three to four times. Correct. But yep. once that's done and it's, they're set in the final destination of American Cemetery, mm -hmm. um, then at that point, that's when the um, adoptions kind of started going through, but I believe the World War One started in the early 2000, I 2000, believe, yeah. and that, but, um, but it originally started way back when, but, you know, to say for some of the people um, uh, that are part of my project, they've actually um, unofficially adopted soldiers uh, because of the powerful feeling they have for them, uh, they didn't need a program to take care of their memory. Yeah. and that and finding the families and stuff so it technically started before that because they care for them so much now it's just official yeah so i remember uh, you know the story of madame renault and uh, the mother of normandy is what she was called of course that came at the end of world war ii when uh mothers and fathers and, and uh, brothers and sisters would want to know something of their 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 kin's final resting place, and right. so she started out very simply, you know, going out and visiting the grave, taking a picture, you know, cleaning it up and stuff, and then sending it back to give. Well, then all of a sudden the letters started pouring back and forth, right? And right. so, and then all of a sudden it got to the community, and kind of branched out to where all of a sudden now it was everybody was getting involved with this. Are you are you are you kind of uh, like me? You know, sometimes, you know, I, I see as we get a, farther away from things how the passion for projects and stuff tends to wane. Okay, over there in Europe, uh, you know, to go over there and, and the, the Adopt a Grave program, uh, it seems to still have the same passion today. Oh, it, yes. it hasn't kind of fallen off the curve, shall we say, to where as you farther you get away from something. Well, why do you think that is so with the European people? Why? Uh, well, because they're so grateful yeah. for... Um, for our men giving their lives. They yeah. can't believe that somebody so far away that have, that don't even know them would actually come over, fight for them, and give their lives. And they're so thankful for um, them and the families for giving their son, husband, 
you know, uh, for their cause. Um, but it's, it's, you know, their opinion is if it wasn't for them, they wouldn't be there. Yeah. Because by the time we came into the war, they were like 90% covered with Germans. Yeah. And so we came in and, and then helped. And it's just amazing um, the stories yeah. that um, are told. And there's still people around today, not many, <laughs> not yeah. many, but there's yeah. still people around today that can actually tell you stories why they, you know, uh, of what happened during that time from World War One and World War II. Right. And some of these individuals that have adopted the soldiers, they they found out that those soldiers actually died within, you know, feet of their where they're living mm -hmm. or where they grew up. Right. and stuff but even today even even while i was there they're erecting memorials for um our soldiers that had given their lives and um, one of the um uh, memorials was for robin's great uncle and a, a hundred and some odd uh, other soldiers that died in this one area um, they actually found a uh, part of the railroad that the injured would be placed on to be taken away from this hospital yeah. and um, I believe it was hospital five but um, uh, one of the adopters actually erected a, a memorial and then they had the inauguration of um, that memorial it was a beautiful ceremony it was amazing all the dignitaries were there and uh, blessing it and, and stuff so now it's there permanently to honor our men that was killed uh, what's what's really uh, inspiring, obviously, for all of us that are over here that are passionate about all this, is the fact that they they, they carry it on to their young. And, you know, Seth, they, they really drive that message home. Where in other venues and stuff, you know, people try to distance themselves from it. Boy, they just they keep it front and center in their their young people's. Oh, oh yes. Uh, I I was so overwhelmed by learning um, and actually interviewing some of the um, adopters, some mm -hmm. of the adults. I have uh, one uh, doctor that had actually adopted three soldiers, one for each of her sons. And so at a young age, she would take them to the cemeteries. They all take their children to the cemeteries. And um, the children have, have the same passion as the parents yes. do, yeah. and they learn. And so now, as they get older, and when they mature and become adults, they'll have the soldiers mm -hmm. themselves. And I've actually interviewed some uh, people, Patty for one, um, from World War II. The soldiers she has um, were also passed down to her. So that's a generational oh, um, gotcha. thing yeah. as well. So, um, but the educational aspect um, in their schools, um, uh, what's required um, for uh, the students uh, to receive their um, freedom patch, which I was lucky this year to be able to observe mm -hmm. uh, before Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I, this year I discovered that um, uh, England, actually it's mandatory for them to bring, uh, uh, to graduate, for the students to take a trip journey to Belgium, to the battlefields and the cemeteries, wow. to learn about World War One and Two, and about what their men had gone through. Yeah. So it's it's absolutely amazing yeah. um, everything that is happening over there. All right. So uh, uh, so we'll take another break here and stuff. When we come back, we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about your journey over there. Okay. okay. And uh, you uh, traveling the countryside. Okay. And interacting with all these great people, obviously. So we'll <laughs> oh, be yes. right back here with Jody. I'm Bob Alvis, and thanks for joining us for this segment of AV Veterans Talk.